Welcome to the Grow My Salon Business podcast, where we focus on the business side of hairdressing. I'm your host, Anthony Whitaker, and I'll be talking to thought leaders in the hairdressing industry, discussing insightful, provocative, and inspiring ideas that matter. So get ready to learn, get ready to be challenged, get ready to be inspired, and most importantly, get ready to grow your salon business. Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Grow My Salon Business podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Whitaker, and it's great to have you here with us today. And whether this is your first time or perhaps you're a regular weekly listener, thank you for tuning into today's episode. And thanks for the feedback on the podcast. The reviews that you've been posting really do mean a lot to me. I read every one of them and I wish it was like social media where I could reply directly to you. But you know who you are. So a heartfelt thanks. Here's one that came in from someone in the United States who said, What I love most about the Grow My Salon Business podcast is the fact that Anthony keeps the topics real and relevant, meaning that the information is not fluff and it's relevant to the times that we are in. I love that the information is universal, meaning that it fits most business models, sizes and cultures. Most importantly, there is trust. I can trust the information given is accurate and comes from the heart. Overall, these podcasts are not to be missed. There's something for everyone. So thank you for putting these together and making the time to do so. Well, thank you. The appreciation is what keeps us going as we're not sponsored. So if you haven't yet left us a review, it would be greatly appreciated. Just go to the Apple Podcast app, scroll to the bottom of the page and write us a review. We would be most appreciative. So with that said, let's get on with today's show. I've been doing a series of podcasts lately where I've been talking to industry educators who have online education platforms ranging from Vivian McKinder in New York to Paul Davey in Dublin, who has the Hairdressing Live platform, and Travis Parker in San Diego, who has Sir Travis Parker Academy. And my guest today is Johnny Athona, who has Alalon Education based in London with his partner, Pedro Inchenko. Now, in today's podcast, we will discuss Johnny's philosophy about education, and we'll also talk about suitability. And I ask the question, what is beauty? And can you teach suitability? Can you teach feeling? And how and why online education is evolving. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Johnny. Hey, Anthony, how are you? Thank you for having me. I'm very good, and uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, our chat today. So, uh, Johnny, I should start by saying to our listeners that I've already had your business partner, uh, Pedro Inchenko from Ennis Alon, uh, on the podcast. That was episode 176, where we spoke mainly about your salon. But today, we're going to focus on your education company, uh, which is Alalon. But before we do that, let's just start off with an overview of you and your background. Who is Johnny Athona? Give us your sort of two-minute backstory. Okay. I'll keep it quite uh, lean in regards to my answer. I am a 45-year-old man based in London with two beautiful sons that I love very much. Uh, I own two companies, Alilon and Enna, which I own with my best friend and my business partner. Uh, Enna is our consumer brand, whereas Alilon is our industry-driven brand. Um, And I've been hairdressing for about 33 years now, so I'm a bit old. Great. Okay. Well, that's a nice little introduction. It sort of sets the scene a little bit. Um, Alalon. Um, I always find it difficult to, uh, you know, get my mouth around that. I know it's yeah. a it's a Greek word originally as well, isn't it? Uh, and I know it actually has a meaning, which is quite uh, appropriate for what for what uh, what you do. Uh, what is the meaning again? What how does what does Alalon translate to in Greek? So when we first started the companies, uh, we wanted names that were quite easy to explain. Um, Enna is modern greek for the word one and what we mean by that is not we are number one it's more like one team one dream one goal one mission and alilon which is actually pronounced alilon is ancient greek for the word one but the, the direct translation is one to another so the principles of sharing so the idea is you have the ancient greek which is alilon which you have to go through the training to then work with the modern greek with enna which is our consumer brand. Perfect, 
Perfect. Very, uh, very well named then. So let's start off with that. What exactly is Alalon Education? Alalon Education is a group of people who have the same goals, the same culture, the same mission, uh, which is basically to share everything we love about what we've learned. Um, the main goal behind the company is to try and be as open as possible. And if you look at the track record of our company in regards to how much information we've given away complementary to the industry and hopefully the positive influence we've had, I think we're living up to our reputation of what we're trying to do. Okay, fair. So, so how did it come about? Because I know you've been, you know, you've had a long career um, as an educator. How did Alalon Education come about? When me and Ped decided to change our journeys, um, we wanted to create a brand that really represented our core values as two people. And um, we did have quite a strong uh, background of education. Um, Ped was teaching longer than myself. I, I worked in the salon for quite a few years, but I used to teach the assistants. It was a different type of level of education. Mm -hmm. And um, when we opened up Alilon, we really wanted to try and create something which was um, something that wasn't static. I find sometimes with education, it's very easy to just duplicate and repeat what you've been taught. And what we wanted to try to do is to a certain degree, look at our journey, look at all the positives and really kind of embrace them and hopefully improve them, but also dissect the things that didn't quite make sense. And then hopefully rewrite what it is we've learned with our flavor, should we say? Yeah. Okay. Now, I mentioned to you earlier on, I've been speaking to a sort of series of educators from different countries, um, and very much about the online side of the education space. Now, I think I'm right in saying that Alalon Education was originally just a live, you know, academy um, in the salon, um, but then it started to sort of morph into doing more online stuff. Do you want to talk to us about that journey? Um, you know, what brought that about? Definitely. I mean, uh, like you said, prior, uh, the big change that everyone went through, um, Alilon was a physical business, it, whether it was shows, classes, seminars, um, internationally or in the UK Academy. And then due to everyone's circumstances changing, um, Alilon was almost like a, a kickstart business based on responding to what was happening around the world to everybody. Um, myself and Bedro, we learned some really valuable lessons about the, the pros and cons of the way we were running our businesses prior. And um, Alilon Plus, which is our, now our virtual platforms, has just taken our business to a whole nother level. It's given us the ability to diversify our services and also reach people that we never, ever, ever could reach before simply because of cost of, you know, uh, different markets, currency exchanges, mm. and so forth. Yeah. So, so Alalon Plus is the online side of the business. So you still have Alalon Education, do you? Which is a, a classroom, live, interactive, you know, face-to-face. Uh, -face. But then on top of that, you've got this online component. Yes. Yeah, so if you were to think of it as like a bit of a division, so Alilon yeah. Education would be any, anything physical where you're sitting in a classroom or you're looking you know, at someone physically in front of you. Whereas um, Alilon Plus, think of it more as in we have virtual classes, group classes, one-to-ones, one-to-one coaching. We have uh, our subscription business, which has over 282 videos now on it. We're now diversifying that. So we're breaking it down to kind of fit into the model of VTCT and MVQ. So there's loads and loads and loads of things that, you know, the digital world is something that I think people need to be aware of. It ain't going away. It's only going to grow. So luckily, myself and Bedro, we were at the beginning of this kind of movement. Um, I would say we are at a point in our business where we're riding that wave and actually inventing what the next kind of steps are within mm -hmm. that business model. It's a whole completely different business model than the physical education. So you have to think of it very differently as well. The key nowadays is that information or data is a new currency. Mm -hmm. And by using a digital platform, you're able to really target and give people what they want rather than what you think they want. 
So, for example, you can keep track of what people are watching and how often they're watching it and what they're watching and the duration they're watching it, whether it's color videos, cutting videos, barbering videos, product videos. How long are they spending? Are they watching mainly bleach videos? Are they watching mainly curly haired videos? And then what you're able to do is custom people's experiences based on what they want. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, channel them with what they need. Yeah, that sounds really good. I mean, I, I totally get what you're saying with that. It's exactly the same with my business especially from the financial perspective is because it's online, you can get people from all four corners of the earth. And uh, yeah, and that's the whole thing. So it, it was very much COVID that spurred you on to take it online. It was a case of like, we know this is going to happen and this is a sort of impetus to really make it take off. So, so, so what have you done? Have you like invested in like a whole sort of studio set up full production is this a full-time thing or something you just dabble with so that's a very good question the fundamentally you have to almost what i've learned from this and maybe if your audience uh, wants to take anything from this particular podcast is don't be scared to try something new and don't be scared to fail because trust me if you stay or, or perceive staying still as being the way to be safe. That's not the reality of how things are moving. So being able to adapt is the key. Um, myself and Bedro brought a lot of money to um, take our company to another level. And we invested a proportion of that into a brand new studios, uh, which has five virtual classrooms, a recording space where we do all of our actual step-by-step -step tutorial videos. Um, and Again, as we've created from the beginning, uh, well, during lockdowns, we could only work on mannequins. So a lot of the content at the beginning was purely mannequin based. And then as we obviously started to allow ourselves to, to work with other people, human beings and so forth, which was for me a godsend again, um, we were able to really start looking at things like texture differences, skin tones and things like that, and really personalizing and looking at suitability and how different things have an impact in your choices of what you're teaching. Um, we invested a lot of money, uh, but the key to this, and this is something that I know me and Peter both very strongly believers on, the, the value to any business isn't necessarily the assets, i.e. the cameras or the, the screens. All these things play a part. It's actually the people that pull it all together. And that, for me, is the, the golden nugget. Surround yourself with the right people, magic happens. Mm -hmm. Have people that don't, aren't on the same journey as you or don't necessarily believe the same vision as you. Everything becomes heavier, you know, and that's not necessary when you're trying to adapt quickly. Yeah, yeah. So you're now full time working on the education side of things. You're not in the salon at all. Yeah, correct. So, okay. yeah. And, and you said a minute ago when you were talking about uh, Avalon Plus, you said something about there being 285 videos or something. So that's a that's a library of content that people can access. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do. I do still have an input in Enna. Mm -hmm. I don't. For me, um, I, I'm, our roles are different, so mm -hmm. our responsibilities are different, uh, and that for me is the balance that we've got now. You know, Ped's able to really kind of run with the vision of him and what the leadership team want. And then if there's anything that maybe needs to be, um, how can I say, it's cro crossed by me, should we say, or worked alongside me, me and Ped just have a little chat on the side and we we make sure everyone's on the same page. And vice versa with Adelon, when we're looking at our report system, our data system, when we're looking at team motivation and who's in front of the cameras, when they're in front of the cameras, all the, all the nitty gritty bits I deal with. And then Ped basically has input on, you know, maybe the, where the vision's going and what we think we need for the business. It's really interesting. It's really fun. And it's allowed me and Ped to really um, express ourselves differently. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And you also mentioned uh, uh, mannequins. Um, and there was a time where that was sort of what you had to do because of, you know, uh, social distancing, etc. cetera. Um, is the majority of the library, do you use mannequins, I suppose is what I'm saying, or do you use humans or is it a mixture of both? Because, you know, I'm always a fan of mannequins as well because you don't have those problems that you get with real hair. You know, you don't have someone tugging at it saying, not too short, or, you know, I'm getting married, I'm trying to grow the layers out, or all that stuff. You know, so mannequins can be really helpful because they get people to focus on technique and Correct. not be focusing on all that other stuff, which is important but let's nail the technique first before you have to deal with all that other stuff. So what, what are your thoughts about that? I agree with everything you just said. Uh, the only thing I'd add to that, 
extra would be that when you have a mannequin, you take away the fear element. So the student is not scared to make a mistake on the mannequin. No mm -hmm. one's going to tell them off, you know, yeah. the, the fear element disappears so people can express themselves much more confidently. Um, the benefit, like you, you mentioned before, how virtually you could have someone from, say, I don't know, Japan, somebody from South Africa on the same on the same um, mm -hmm. class. Actually, what we found um, when we first launched it, that was the business model, just to get any hairdressers from anywhere involved. And then what we realized, actually, in reality, when you do that kind of class, you have many different levels of student on the class mm -hmm. and you also have language as a problem. So that can become quite disturbing in regards to the session. So what we started to do was we changed the business model. So rather than selling to individual hairdressers, we started involving Davinus, who's our business partner in everything that we, we do. And they've been an amazing, an amazing kind of support mechanism. So what we do is through their distribution network, we sell group classes to salon owners who then have them and their teams within the session. So it's much more controlled and you can actually deliver a class really smoothly there isn't all these moving pieces of different internet connections dropping sorry i missed that bit could you could you go back sorry mm. I, I couldn't hear you you know all that stuff that happens when you've got one feed and it's you and a group of people it becomes brilliant another thing we did which was i think quite unique again through the davenus network is sell one-to-one -one sessions so it for example will be me and you on the other side of the screen whatever um, let's say for example the distributor from South Africa decided to buy you a gift and that gift was a session with Johnny or a session with the Alalon team. We would get in contact with you. We would have a consultation to find out what your exact wants are. Technically, you own three hours of my life. Where should we focus those three hours? How should we use them? I struggle with curly hair, for example, or I find it really hard to work on balance or whatever the conversation will be. And then we'd custom make the session for you which again is completely different to having a group session where you're trying to navigate multiple people's abilities. Um, and then obviously we'd schedule a class and then deliver the physical class virtually, me and you on the other side. And I'll be honest with you, it's been amazing. I'll tell you the best thing about it. It's reignited my team. Like mm. they've learned new skills. Mm. A lot of people are tech, they have this fear of tech sometimes. And they've been forced to embrace technology and understand how it works what happens when your camera drops off what happens when the microphones are not like all these things that you you've never had to deal with before in a class scenario mm. what happens when you can't physically pick up that student's hair and show them you know physically in front of yeah. them and yeah. all these lessons it makes you such a better educator as a whole you know mm. you have to be able to use your mouth to explain the words so clearly for that person to really be able to understand and yeah. for me that makes a really good uh, a really good uh, tool for my team to, yeah, to grow very good very good you yeah, know i agree with that um i know you uh and i've seen you teach and i know the way you work mm. and you're very very technical i don't want to put the words yeah. in your mouth here but if someone said to me what's alalon what's what's johnny you know what comes to mind i'd say technique he's he's like hardcore technique what is your philosophy on hair what's your thinking behind alalon what what is it that makes what you do different to other educators online or not online really good question so what i would say to you is this if we're talking about me as a person uh, my personal belief is never lie in a class people know when you're telling them you're trying to make them feel good about what they've done. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it's not about being hard or soft. It's about being honest. Um, when they walk out of that class, they need to, to know that there's been some kind of growth happening. Um, my team have the same passion, I would say, in regards to being honest with the students, uh, truly honest. Sometimes it's very hard for people to absorb that, but I'd rather do it properly then do it half-heartedly. So if you were to ask me what's the biggest difference between us and other education companies, I would say ask our students because they would be the best people to explain to you what their experience is really truly like. I don't believe, I don't want to be the biggest education company in the world. I just want to be one of the most respected. And how do you do that? You do that by hopefully uh, being true to your own personal philosophy and how you look at hair. So, for example, as a company, we don't talk about layering, graduation and line. We don't talk about square circles and tri triangles. We don't talk about over direction and elevation. We talk about choice of length, root movement, 
placement of um, natural natural fall. We talk about um, growth patterns. We talk about a lot of detail that I think, um, I don't know how deep I want to go into the rabbit hole, but basically what we've done is we've taken everything that we we know, we've ripped it to shreds and we've, we're focusing our attention on other things. It's not that, it's not that these things don't play a part in education because they do. Mm-hmm. It's about what is it that as a company we want to focus on. Choice of length, root movements, number systems. These are just some of the things that for us are really important. So we tend to design our class and our curriculum like that. In our education journey, you can't move forward to the next course until you do the first course. Mm-hmm. And we tell you at the end of that course whether or not you can move on or not. And there's something that's a bit of a secret. I'm not sure if I should say, but I will do because it's you. There's something we're doing, which is going to be very, very, very unique, um, Mm -hmm. which basically is as we're in a classroom scenario. So we always do reviews at the end of at the end of classes where we sit down with the students and find out about their experience, but also tell them what we believe is the future journey for them. Um, So as they move through the stages of the courses, they really understand that we're with them. They're not just coming, paying money, getting a certificate and going home. For me, that's not what education should be about. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're we're launching this thing. It's going to be from New Year. We've created this platform, which is, again, a digital platform, which allows us to um, personalize everybody's learning experience. So when we're in the class, we're able to, let's pretend I was teaching you. I'm able to, to, get a profile picture of you, get all your details, blah, blah. And then we have a tick list of things that we feel you need to work on or what you're good at. And then we grade you during the class process. So at the end of the classes, at the end of the fourth day or third day or second day, we're able to say to you, okay, look, um, for example, I feel that you, you need to work on your tension. You need to work at looking at the roots. You need to work on X, Y, and Z, right? And then the next time you come to an Alilong class, I may not be your educator. It may be one of my other educators. So they'll be able to go onto this digital platform, look at your history and go, mm-hmm. okay, the last time you were taught, this person was your educator and this is the feedback they gave you. And these are the things that you've been that asked you to work on. Okay, so I'm going to focus as your educator on these things to see if you have actually grown. And then we're able to keep it almost like a proper dialogue, a proper journey on that person's um, career. And right. for me, that's mm-hmm. where education should be going. Yeah, yeah, very good. So... Alalon before Alalon Plus mm. was, uh, tell me if I've got this wrong, it was very much about doing shows. You seem to be on the road all the time doing shows. Is this now become the biggest part of the company and where there's the most growth, that online education is, is where you're focused as opposed to uh, being out on the road doing shows and doing live classes? The answer to that question is no. Uh, for example, in September, I was in the Philippines, France, Poland, the Lithuania in the whole month of September. So I was in London for two days. But what it is, is uh, we've managed to to create the company in a way where there's people responsible for different things. So there's a team working on the digital business. There's a team working on the physical business. So there is a crossover between the talents, i.e. the people behind the camera doing the physical hair, whether it's pre-recorded um video for the subscription business or whether it's a virtual class but there's somebody in charge of organizing all the virtual classes there's somebody in charge of organizing all the video content there's somebody in charge of all the physical stuff and booking the calendar and looking after the physical stuff so uh, there's somebody in charge of looking after the the academy so i think one of the things that i've learned along my along my journey also from an influence from you so thank you for this has been to have the right systems in play to allow people to have accountability, to have responsibility, to flourish, to allow them to have their own input, to really be able to almost allow me to work on the business rather than be in the business as much. And obviously there's books like the E-Myth, there's obviously things that you've taught us, there's different things that I've learned from so many different people. I've been very lucky on my journey. Um, But the big thing for me is having the structure in place to allow me to just simply plug in, plug out where I need to focus my energy. Um, and just keep the balls kind of juggling, really. But the yeah. team is the key. Like, our team is so good at really, um, I need this done. What do you think is the best way of doing it? Okay, go. Do you know what I mean? And, and I, I do, I do. And you have a great team. And whenever I've, uh, I was looking at some of the videos on the website beforehand, and oh, cool. I, I could recognize a lot of the people that were there still. And it was like, oh, my God, they're still there. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah. We uh, Our turnover of staff is tiny, literally yeah. is tiny. Yeah, We've well, been really it. lucky. That's yeah, a good sign. Really that's a good yeah. sign. So 
what do you, the, the other thing that I think of with you is that you teach cutting hair. Obviously, you teach more than that. So, so if you don't, other people do. So, is the Alalon Plus? Does it cover cutting hair, coloring hair, dressing hair? You know, is is everything in there, or is it just specifically focused on cutting? So, on the digital platform, let's talk about the subscription platform. There is content from everything. Um, it's very kind of inclusive. So, there's lots of different textures, lots of different nationalities. We've tried to really make it accessible for everybody whether it's blow drying and styling whether it's dressing whether it's cutting and coloring when it comes to the virtual classes there is everything from uh, one-to-one sessions i.e physical cutting sessions but with me they can also have business coaching or mentoring uh, which has also been really if i'm honest been quite successful um and that tends to be more about me talking from my experiences like because I'm, I'm i have a salon so I know what it's like to be in a salon. Mm-hmm. I have an education company. I've been on, I do on, you know, I do everything that they may want to do. Um, so that's really fun. And I love doing that. Um, and it, whether it's me, me working with them in a physical class, uh, cutting hair or me doing the coaching or whether it's my team doing cutting or coloring classes, all of this. So just think about the digital business as having the subscription business as being one animal and then the virtual classes as being another animal. Right. Okay. And is it accessed via a website or is it an app? Like, how does that work? Okay. So if anybody wants to experience Alon Plus, you simply just type in Alon Plus on your Safari or your Google. And when you go into the, the kind of platform, you will see that obviously you could subscribe to either a weekly, monthly, six month or yearly sub. Um, and the content, as soon as you go in, there's no boundaries. So you're, you're, you've got access to everything. Like I said, our philosophy is give everything and something's going to stick rather than try and be specific. Um, And if they want to have virtual classes, i.e. virtual one-to-ones or virtual sessions with their salons, they would um, email info at aloneducation.com. This is info at aloneducation.com and they'll be able to, uh, we'll, we'll get in touch with them and arrange a class. Okay, cool. Uh, And another thing I saw, uh, I was on your website or somewhere was Alalon Unplugged. Uh, what's Alalon Unplugged? Good question. So we have lot. We, have, we do lots of different things. So Alalon Unplugged is something that we did prior COVID um, for for one year every night on a Tuesday night, depending on where I was in the world. I did like a Facebook Live where I just I had a model. Uh, it could have been any any country that I was in, and I would do this uh, haircut, step by step haircut. It was usually maybe an hour and a half to two hours. Um, where people can really interact, watch, comment, and so forth. And I did that every single Tuesday for a solid year. Um, and then um, COVID hit. And since COVID, we've we obviously been focused on our digital business. And then what we found was, actually, we've got lots of people messaging us going, oh, when can you start the online unplugs again? And I was a bit conflicted, if I'm honest, because to a certain degree, we are so open that what, we, what was quite interesting about it is you, you can really see who's watching. So we had a lot of people watching and a lot of people absorbing our our lectures, our theory and so forth, and then kind of regurgitating it, which is a massive compliment to a certain degree, but it's also a little bit frustrating if it's not being recognized. I found that quite frustrating. Um, so Alelon Unplugged is basically, it was a Facebook Live, which was uh, different people now. So before it was only me. And now we've started to have all the different teams to profile the different team members so that they can be, build their identities around the world. Um, and then we have obviously the open house event, which is a completely different thing where the, on the Sound International weekend, we basically open the building up and any we, we charge, I think it's £10 a ticket. And that t- all that money goes straight to a charity uh, that we choose from. We choose usually a sustainable Mm. Uh, a sustainable charity and then we have hairdressers we've had up to three to four hundred hairdressers walking up and down the building because obviously the building's like you've been there it's like five floors so um people kind of walking up and down just basically watching our team do hair have drinks have listen to cool music just like like an open house this is Mm. our home come into our home and experience our team you know ask questions get involved be part of our community and um i think that's been a huge success. We didn't do it this year, unfortunately, because we're refurbishing all the floors. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, I sort of alluded to this at the beginning. We talked a little bit about the loyalty of your, of your team, et cetera. And yeah. every time I've gone on there, they're, they're passionate teachers. You know, they're passionate mm-hmm. hairdressers. They're, they're mm-hmm. really, really into what they do. Um, 
as you are. And I wanted to ask you about the teaching side of that. What is it that makes someone a good teacher? You've sort of touched on some of those elements earlier on, but you know, what do you look for um, in someone being a good teacher or, you know, when you look at someone, whether it's yourself or whatever, you know, what is that ingredient that someone brings to the table that makes them a good teacher? That's such a good question. It depends what lens I want to look through. Uh, Fundamentally for me, there's a huge difference between a teacher and an educator. So Mm -hmm. you could be in a room, you could have a teacher, you could have students, doesn't mean there's any learning happening. So for me, I believe, uh, and this is something that I I'm quite strong about with my team and obviously Ped Ped has the same kind of philosophy as me is that when you're going to teach, you teach from your heart because when you teach from your heart, people can tell when you're not being genuine, they can feel it. They don't, you don't need to, you can only, you can only pretend that that you care about someone's journey for a short period of time before someone feels it. And that is to a certain degree when you're checking somebody's haircut and you're telling them it's great and they can see it one side an inch longer, but you're telling them it's great because you don't want to hurt their feelings. For me, that's what a teacher does, whereas an educator is more of a mentor. It's somebody that actually people can really connect with and know that even though I have to give you some bad news, there's an answer to how we can make it better. And I'm Mm -hmm. going to help you and I'm going to get behind you and I'm going to make sure that you do what's needed for you not to have this problem every time. A good educator for me is somebody who fundamentally makes themselves not necessary. Because if I'm doing a good job teaching you and I'm actually doing a good job, you shouldn't need me. Whereas it's like a doctor who just keeps feeding you pills because he's making money rather than actually a doctor who tells, coaches you on how to make your lifestyle better so you don't get ill again. For me, my job is to make myself superfluous. That's my job. If I can get you to a point where you don't need me anymore, I'm a good educator, right? Yeah, 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 got it. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, You and I had a similar background in terms of our training, and it was Mm -hmm. very much uh, technique. Um, So what I want to ask you about is, and you can become a really good hair cutter with, Mm -hmm. you know, strong technical training. But just because you're good at technically cutting hair it doesn't mean that you have any understanding about beauty or suitability, et cetera. Okay. So I want to ask you that question about beauty. What is beauty to you? Mm. How do you, because you, you are, are renowned for doing, let's call it strong work, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and it's beautifully executed strong work. <laughs> So it's not just strong, uh, it's, it's, they're strong, but there's also stuff that has this really nice <laughs> twist to it where it's beautiful. So like define that to me, what is beauty? Because I mean, I was a teacher too, behind the chair, cutting hair for you know, 15, 20 years or whatever. Uh, and I, I still to this day grapple <laughs> with trying to answer that question because there's a lot of, there's a lot of fluff about yeah. beauty. There's a lot of fluff yeah. around suitability and, you know, all that stuff. And, I, and I'm always searching and asking uh, other people, you know, what they see as beauty, how they define beauty. And I love your diplomacy. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, for me, it's a really, that's actually a really simple uh, uh, question to answer. Mm. Uh, for me, it's all about energy. You can create the best haircut on somebody, but if they don't wear it properly, it doesn't make a difference. Mm. sometimes the best haircuts that you see are people that cut their own hair and it's really rough and it's really and yes. un- un- so for me suitability is about energy you need to understand the energy of the person in front of you because if i know me cutting a strong hard fringe on your face is going to make you feel silly mm. why would i possibly do that because you mm. can't sell it so suitability for me is more in the consultation you need to understand the human psychology and more about how the person sees themselves because you could you could do the most technical most mechanical cut or color but if i don't if i can't make it feel sexy if i don't feel sexy wearing it how can i possibly come across confident Mm. so for me beauty (laughs) beauty is an eye powder for me beauty is about understanding the energy of of the person that you're dealing with and then complementing that just keep focus on building their positive energy because if you can get that, that 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 kind of movement whether it's a choice of length whether it's softness whether it's definition it's all about making that person more confident that for me is suitability 
Because yeah, I, I, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. You may have someone who, with all due respect, might end up, might look like me, right? They might be not just not right. Okay. But yet, <laughs> but yet they love their haircut and they come across so confident and one bit shaved and one bit's weird and one yeah. bit's green and one bit, yeah. but they sell it. And yeah. then you've got, then you've got another person who just simply putting a bit of a, I don't know, a fringe in freaks them out and they all of a sudden they, they haven't got that length to make them feel secure and blah blah mm. it's it's all about energy for me the, I, I love that answer i've never had that answer before energy is a great way of putting it i mean i've i, I have this this sentence that uh, there's variations of a theme floating around with this but it's suitability is about making someone look on the outside the way they feel on the inside nice and and that's it isn't it that's you know it's energy is a different way of saying that it's about mm. you know because if, if you feel you look good with something then you look good with it Do, like that's all that matters you, you feel ham- it's energy and confidence if you feel you look good with it 100%. then you're confident to wear it you sell it and how many times how many times have you worn something and someone who, who loves you or cares about it's gone what are you doing you look mm. ridiculous. And yeah, you, go, you yeah. know what? I love it and I feel good wearing it. So I don't mm. care what you think. And that's the key. You know yeah. what I mean? It doesn't matter if I've got a hard ha- haircut. I like it. I want it. You know, mm. so I don't know. Listening, I think, is a really good, uh, if I was to give something technical to focus on, listen. Don't just hear. Don't just listen. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let me ask you about how you teach it. So okay. you've, got a, you've got a young kid who's started with you in the salon doing an apprenticeship or whatever, and you can teach them how to cut that bob or how to cut that mm-hmm. long layer or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But how do you teach them about suitability? So what I do is I teach them about human psychology, not suitability. Okay. Tell so, me what I mean focus, by that. so what I mean by that is I... I wouldn't necessarily always do it in front of the client, but sometimes I would in front of the model. I'd be like, look, mm. let's look at how she's feeling or he's feeling. Look at the way she's sitting. Look, Let's look at the way she's kind of moving the hair onto her face, hiding behind her hair. What happens if you expose her? How's she going to feel? And a lot of it is to do with the, the words that we're using, but also um, primarily really watching and understanding how the, how the words you're, that are coming out of your mouth are being received and then projected back. So uh, if I was to make it a, a learning experience for maybe someone listening, I would say, look, first thing you do is pull your assistants aside and have a conversation with them about let's analyze how the person's body language and what their voice tone and how they're responding to you. And then after the haircut or after you've before you get it shampooed, let's go away again and have a discussion about what you've taken from that. So break it down slowly. slowly and all of a sudden what you're doing is you're learning to teach and the student is learning how to read signals that are being sent to them uh, i think being sensitive and empathetic is a good starting point because people bring their baggages to their to their their consultation they bring their fears and their anxiety and all the other stuff that kind of lay on top of them to the consultation so if you can teach the assistant to be empathetic to be patient to try and really hear what the person's saying uh, and also not to push what they think too much mm. so to suggest so we have a script in the salon where the assistants are taught, okay, you know, tell me something you love about your hair. Tell me something you find challenging about your hair as a starting point, for example. Mm. The scripting that you can give your assistants is key yeah, to yeah. getting information out rather mm. than putting information in. Mm, so uh, yeah. the, the scripting is something I'd focus on. Yeah, I like that. It's about getting information out rather than putting information in. That's very good. That's very good. Okay. Um, what about fashion? How much are you influenced by fashion? That's such a that's such a delicate question for me. That one. Yeah, yeah I know. Because, <laughs> um, uh, I'll be I'll be really honest. Okay, I am not a fashion driven person in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I am more of a, about human energy and connection and things like that. So, the the problem I have with fashion is that not the problem I have with fashion. Let me reword that differently. The danger of following fashion is that you're always going to be the follower. And for me, it's up. I would prefer to do what I'm into and what my team are into, the vision of what we believe as hairdressers, rather than being to a certain degree dictated to by what the season is. But why should I follow what someone else is telling me I need to follow? I, I'm not a session stylist, so obviously I don't. I have the freedom to not be dictated to by fashion. I don't mind being influenced by fashion, but for me, that's not that's not how hair should be done. 
Um, for me, hair should be done based on what your personal vision is on that person that's in front of you. It's different if you're doing a hair show for London Fashion Week. You know, you're being dictated to by, say, the you know the, the stylist of they want the hair greased back and blah, blah, blah. Mm. But in my world, which is education, I focus on the hairdresser, not a fashion designer. So, you know, Alilon, if you were to nam- numb it down to one word, Alilon has, had a, has been a massive influence on teaching teachers rather than hairdressers. Because if we can teach the teachers, we can have much more of a stronger reach. So I know that we've been lucky enough to influence a lot of different people uh, at such high levels um, in a positive way, hopefully. And by them embracing some of the information that we share, then all we're doing is making the whole picture of the hairdressing industry stronger because we're, to a certain degree, ripping to shreds what we know is factually incorrect and redesigning it to make it less gray and a bit more simple to understand language yeah. is really important yes i was just going to say that as I, was, I was just writing something down that it's that thing it's not about uh what you don't teach people what to think you teach them how to think mm. and mm. there's a, a very similar you know phrase which you'll often hear good educators use i, I know lots of people have used this i don't know who said it first that uh, and you i think you've probably said this as well is that you don't teach people how to do a haircut you mm. teach them how to cut hair Mm. And it's almost the same thing, but it's very different. You know, if you can teach people how to cut hair, then they can do any haircut. Whereas if you teach them how to do a haircut, then they can do that haircut. And Correct. they try and put that on everybody. And we all know people that do that. Yeah. Okay. There's one thing There's one thing that I'd like to say, which I think is quite important. And this is a good thing, I think, for anybody who owns a salon who can basically help their staff. The first haircut you ever give someone will be the worst haircut you ever give them. Ever because you don't know their textures, you don't know who they are, you don't know how they respond to things, you don't know how they maintain their hair. There's so much unknown. So the first haircut you give them will always be the worst. Your haircut should only get better the more you cut their hair. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense as you get to know it and they get to know you and trust you and all that. You understand their growth patterns, you understand how they respond, you understand how the choice of length last time didn't quite work for them, maybe they couldn't manage it properly or whatever it will be. Mm. So the first haircut, it should always be your worst haircut you ever give someone or the first colour you ever give someone, same thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I'm thinking about you and Pedro. Mm. Uh, If if I was talking about Pedro, your business partner. Best um, friend. And best friend. Best friend. Best friend first. Best friend first. Uh, I yeah. would say that he is more. <laughs> I'm probably going to get in trouble for this. I would say he is more feeling orientated. You know, he's whereas you're more technical. Would that be right? Are you the yin and the yang in the business? I mean, like you both bring that different part to it, which shows in lots of different things. Does that show in how you both do hair as well as? you know, how you relate to people and, you know, the business itself? Do you do you come at it from, you know, different roles that complement each other? Really good One's question. better or worse than the other. Yeah, yeah, They're just course, like they complement each other. Yeah, really good question. Um, I would say there's certain things. I mean, like I said, me and Ped, we're, we're best friends first, business partners second. For me, I'd rather lose the companies and lose my best friend. So uh, I, I don't, I, I, I deal with Ped like he is my best friend. Benefit of that is that we understand each other inside out, like in a, on a ridiculous level. Mm. So we both have the same core values when it comes to, say, humanity and trying to be the best version of ourselves for other people, trying to be kind, trying to be empathetic, trying to be um, supportive, trying to nurture people, trying to mentor people. Our style is different. So Pedro is very much... Um, let me help you get there. Let me try and um, make you look to where the answers are. Whereas mm. I'm maybe slightly more, this is where we're going. Get behind me. This is where we're going. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, let, let, let's all, let's all get there together. So one, one of the, be- one of the beautiful things about mm. Ped with me, I mean, obviously he might tell you something different, but one of the things that I love about Ped is that where sometimes um, I am very, uh, this is where we need to go this is what I've, my new idea, this is what we need to, this is where we need to be, this is what the team needs to do, da, 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 da. what PED does is stabilize behind me. Um, whereas, and, 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 yeah. and in some senses, for him, that can be really frustrating because it's like, I will kind of throw everything up in the air and let's do this, let's change this, let's do it. 
and he'll be like, whoa, 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 let's, 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 what about this one? What about, and then I'll get frustrated because I'll be like, no, 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 forget about that. We've done that now. Let's move forward. Let's, so the, the, the partnership is so healthy because we could turn around with all due respect and um, nothing is off the table for a discussion mm. and nothing is personal because our relationship is so strong. So it's really crazy. Uh, it's so good. Honestly, it really is. We have such a good time. And the reason we're so successful is because of our team. Fundamentally, uh, take me and Ped away or take our team away. We're nothing. What are we? We're two, two Greek guys who are trying to make it make things work and trying to leave some kind of legacy. But fundamentally, without our team, we're nothing. Yeah, I think that but that's that's everybody. And, and you know, if they're really honest about it, that's humility to, to recognize that. Um, I'm going to keep coming back at this from different angles, right? Yeah, and, please, uh, please. I love it. I'm enjoying it. Um, it's all about the sort of creative process. Okay. Um, how different people, creativity is different to different people. If I look at your the hair you do, okay. I'd be more inclined to say it's art. Like you're very much about, like you said, you're not really that interested in fashion and, you know, mm. you, you sort of said suitability and stuff is more about energy. And I, I get all that. I thought they were great mm. answers. Um, mm. And, you know, we happen to be using Pedro as the analogy, but it could be any, it could be anybody. Do you know what okay. I mean? That other people are more more about suitability, more mm -hmm. about – here's a – let me come at it from another way. I used to go to France quite a bit and in the old days and I would teach, you know, hairdressing or whatever, go to Italy, whatever. Two countries I loved or still love. Mm. And in terms of my training at doing hair and mm -hmm. thus your training, we were very technical about hair, how hair had to be done. You okay. would go to France or go to Italy and it wouldn't necessarily be done with the same technique. You know, you'd pick it up and go, oh, my God, who did this? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, sort mm -hmm. of thing. They didn't approach hair with the same technique, but they approached hair with a different feeling. It wasn't, about, it wasn't about art. It was about mm -hmm. feeling. I'm really just trying to get you to, get you. to comment on that creative process of of hair and art and fashion and style and beauty and all these things that i'm sort of chucking at you do you know what's been lost what's been lost in our industry and i'm fighting to try and kind of re reignite it is this idea of cutting from wet to dry allowing the haircut to do all of the work for you um, if a haircut needs to be manipulated into shape it's the wrong choice of length for that particular texture um, and that for me is an art form, which for me is uh, dangerously getting close to being lost. So I'm really focused on that on my classes, me personally, when I'm in the classroom. Different cultures embrace hair in a different way. And if I if I was to look at my skill sets as a hairdresser, I would say that I have the ability to choose the right lengths for the haircut to work for themselves. But I wouldn't say I have the skill sets to be able to manipulate hair when it comes to styling as some of the hairdressers you're talking about, some of the cultures of hairdressing you're talking about. That's what I'm trying to do with Alan Plus, showcasing different skill sets that aren't natural to me. Um, I can tell you very quickly if a shape is unbalanced or not clean or whatever, but what I can't tell you is how to achieve that beautiful, glossy bend in the hair, which just kind of sits like, you know, this Farrah Fawcett movement mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. There's, there, there's a beauty and elegance to that. Yeah, and yeah. You, men you mentioned before about, you know, beauty. And it's like, there's, there's people who look up, for example, some of my work and might say to, say that it not, isn't necessarily always beautiful. And my answer to that is it doesn't have to be. Because normally when you're looking at something that isn't, doesn't sit right, you just, because it's slightly different. Your eye isn't used to looking at it. Whereas if you're just reproducing um, what is acceptable to the naked eye, I find that really boring. Uh, I mean, how many how many bobs can I can I look at in my life? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want I want to challenge. I want to look at something. And go, oh my god, that's a bit crazy. That's a bit. Does that work? I don't know. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. You know, and and for me, that's the that's the exploration of cutting hair. Mm. Um, I don't know if I've answered your question, but no, no, you you, you have, and you've made me think of something. Um, I could cut hair well, and I'd you know have a client, and I'd cut her hair, and she'd be very happy, and she'd leave. And I can mm. remember, you know, one particular, and I tell you, happy that oh, I love it, Anthony, it's great, you know. Mm. And I can remember one day I was in the uh, I was in the supermarket, 
And it was late at night. And I saw this client. It was a client of mine whose hair I'd cut like two weeks before. And she's walking. <laughs> she was walking towards me. I'd seen her. She hadn't seen me. And I thought, oh, my God, she's gone and had a haircut somewhere else. Like, you know, like she didn't like yeah, it. Yeah, you obviously. could see it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so I nipped around the other aisle to save the embarrassment of like, <laughs> ah, what's happened, you know. And all of a sudden she tapped me on the shoulder and I turned around and uh, I was like, oh, you know, pretending I was surprised. And she said, Anthony, I just want to thank you so much. I love what you've done with my hair. And this comes back to that thing we're talking about with beauty and suitability. Mm. She hadn't had her hair cut elsewhere. She just wore it. She brought life to it. She brought energy to it. She put some of her into it. And and, and that's what the difference is, isn't it? You know, I, I, I've mentioned this before on the podcast. We, one of my salons, I used to have a, there was a coffee shop across the road from it. I'd go and sit over there sometimes and, you know, I could see clients walking out of the salon and you'd see them walk out the door with like this perfectly done hair. And they'd walk up the street, you know, past two or three shops, and they'd be checking themselves out in the shop windows as they walked up. And once they got 20, 30 meters away from the salon, a high percentage of them would mess up their hair. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And, you know, they'd tuck it behind their ears. They'd sort of do something with it. And, and, that, and that's the bit. They're putting some of them into it. And I think that's a beautiful thing. It's what the, in this case, woman, it's what the woman brings to it that brings it to life, that, that makes it beautiful and makes it sexy. Do you know what, um, what's, I think, quite unique now compared to maybe 20, 30 years ago? Products play a massive part in how hair can be styled now. Hmm. We're lucky, obviously, because we've got an amazing relationship with Davinus. And that for us has been like, a rock i'm not gonna lie the company's been amazing and what i love about them is that we're able to literally like i'm able to pick up my phone now and speak to anybody in the company from david who owns it to anthony to mark to liam to whoever and i love that the accessibility because i can really focus on can we improve the products and what problems we're having with any of them or things like that or the mm. success stories and education going back to the consultation side of it if you can educate your assistant your stylists, your clients on how to manipulate product properly and just allow the haircut to breathe with a bit of product in it, yeah, whether yeah. it's a spray, whether it's a wax, whether it's a, mm. a mousse, whatever it is, that, that touch that you're talking about is when the hair is a bit worn in and a bit manipulated, you know, and products are key to that. And that's where I think a lot of hairdressers mm. don't quite get it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and also you mentioned editorial hairdressers before. Mm. There's lots of good editorial hairdressers that do not give them a pair of scissors ever because they have yeah. no idea what they're doing. Mm. But they will go up to something that you that I've done. I'm not going to say that you've done. They'll go mm. up to something that I've done and they'll just literally push it, push it, and <laughs> you'll go, "Why? Why didn't I do that? And why why that didn't is, it work for me?" <laughs> that's the art. That's the skill, isn't it? That's, that's that. That's that understanding of beauty and taste and refinement of balance and stuff that that is like lost on so many people but listen we're gonna have to set. yes it is we're gonna okay. wrap up in a few minutes but i've got a couple no of uh sort of quick fire questions um let me get ready okay for you how many have i got i've got five there uh, what's your right, biggest what's your biggest strength my biggest strength is also my biggest weakness which is uh i can be too intense okay i wouldn't have figured that <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke, by the way. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. What, what, what drives you? Um, the <laughs> truth. The thing that really, truly drives me is when um, maybe it's scar tissue from my childhood, but it's the ability to be told or to, to believe that I can't do something. That for mm. me is like fuel. Like you tell me I can't do something. Oh, I love it. I'm like, okay, we'll see. Okay. I won't say anything. I'll just show you. Yeah. So that for me is a huge, way. yeah. That's a yeah. huge, a huge trigger for me. Yeah. Okay. Like believing that something's undoable or not not attainable, that's yeah. the one I want to go for. Right. All right. Um, you've been doing this a long while, you know, mm -hmm. 30, 35 years. I mentioned I've looked at some of your collections and I see they evolve and change, which is always fantastic. Um, how do you stay relevant? How do you reinvent yourself? What's the key for someone listening to this? Mm -hmm. you know, in a bit of a rut in the salon, you know, 12 clients a day, five days a week, you know, doing the same old thing day in, day out. What is the secret to reinvention? 
Well, obviously, the first answer would be education. But if I think about it a bit more spiritually, our collections are never about Alilon. Our collections are always about telling somebody's story. For example, if you say to me, for example, I'm really inspired by this vase or this beautiful building. Uh, my answer would be actually, is it the building that's inspirational or the glass or is it the person's mind who thought about why that building should be made out of that glass, that material, that size, that shape? It's the mind that's the inspiration, not the end product. So my advice to people who may be a bit feeling a bit stale is look around you at things that have nothing to do with what you do and be open to understanding the person's mindset who created whatever it is that you're looking at. Because that's where the true inspiration is. Exactly. It goes back to that thing we said before. It's not what you think, it's how you think. Yeah. You get you get stuck in that rut of thinking a certain way. You've got to learn to think and look at things in a different way. Okay. There's, being, there's thinking and there's being conscious, two different things. Yeah. We haven't got time to open up that. But, Correct. But um, what's the biggest lesson that you have learned in life? doesn't have to be anything to do with hairdressing. It may be, but may not be. Wow, what a question. Biggest lesson I've learned in life. I think it's don't be scared to fail. Okay, yeah, there's a lot in that. All right, and last one is what do you wish you were better at? <laughs> I think I could work on maybe being a bit more... Um, I expect people to think like me. And I've learned that, that doesn't, that's not realistic. Okay. So I could... I could learn to be a bit more empathetic in, in understanding where other people's brains work, their actual neuroscience, how their brain actually functions. Yeah, good, good. Oh, I like that. Okay, well, listen, this has been a great conversation. I'm sorry, but we're going to have to start to wrap up. Uh, no Whereabouts can people connect with you on Instagram or any other social media channels? By all means, if anyone wants to connect, feel free to email any of for any of our information on info at alloneducation.com or go on allonplus.com and have a look at any of our content or go on our Facebook page, uh, Alon Education or Alon Education on Instagram. You'll see constant stuff that what I'm doing, where we are, what, what we're up to. Right. Um, we love connecting with people. So so it's Alilon Education on all of our media, Instagram and Facebook. Got it. Okay. Well, listen, I will put those links uh, on our website. Uh, grandmasalonbusiness.com and in the show notes for this uh, podcast no matter where you're listening to it so if you're listening to this podcast with johnny othona and have enjoyed it do me a favor take a screenshot on your phone and share it to your instagram stories and don't forget to subscribe and leave us a rating and review on the apple podcast that while you're there so to wrap up johnny thanks for being on this week's episode of the grow my salon business podcast it's been great having this opportunity man I thank you for your time and hopefully the listeners have enjoyed it. Um, yep. Thank you. I appreciate sure it. Will. Cheers, buddy. See you, bro. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. If you'd like to connect with us, you'll find us at growmysalonbusiness.com or on Facebook and Instagram at growmysalonbusiness. And if you enjoyed tuning into our podcast, make sure that you subscribe, like, and share it with your friends. Until next time, this is Anthony Whitaker wishing you continued success.